It's a very, very good morning. It's a Thursday in Lusaka. The skies are clear and the weather is excellent. Um, welcome to the Hot Seat Radio Program with me, George Eliza. My guest this morning on the program is the, a man that requires no introduction. Having served in the Patriotic Front government under both the late Michael Sata and President Edgar Lungu, he made his name when he resigned as Foreign Affairs Minister over what he termed swelling levels of corruption in the government. Uh, Honorable uh, Kalaba is now leader of the Opposition Democratic Party and a contender in the August 12 general elections. He joins me in the studio this morning to discuss his party's vision for Zambia and uh, readiness for the polls and also uh, to lend voice to on several issues of national importance. Um, we are coming live uh, from the Hot Media House uh, in Long Acres, Lusaka. We are also live on Kwitu 93.3, KFM Mansa and Mafken Radio. Radio. And um, later in the program, we'll be we're opening the phone lines. Please get ready with you, with your dialing fingers. I'm sure many of you are eager to to have a chat with uh, um, uh, President Kalaba of the Democratic Party. Uh, Mr. Kalaba, welcome to the interview. I thank you very much for having me uh, here, Your Excellency, and uh, I'm happy to to see you away from the corridors of foreign affairs mm -hmm. but now i'm seeing you right here studios doing most amazing we yeah. have we actually i think served both michael sutter and both of us yes so us. so when you are saying he saved you both i said but do you know your excellency <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i know i know you i knew you were, you would bring that up so i yeah. might as well just uh, confess <laughs> thank uh, you so, but nevertheless it's a pleasure to have you <laughs> thank uh, it's you, so always so. interesting to pick your brain on a number of things but uh, if you remember properly when you resigned from uh, the, the patriotic front government you, you what, one of your vociferous choruses was corruption. Corruption. Swelling levels of corruption. Those are your exact words. Swelling levels of corruption. Um, uh, have you ever regretted making that decision? Um, it's, it's, it's looking back, uh, is it a decision you pull back? Uh, your Excellency, in fact, I must uh, concede mm -hmm. that uh, if there is a decision that I have made and I stand proud to defend even today, it is my resignation from government uh, some four years ago. And uh, I resigned because I saw what you are seeing today. But because of being under oath, I could not say much at that time. But I said time will vindicate me. I said time will absorb me. And I'm happy today to say time has really vindicated me because I gave corruption as a reason I resigned. And so many people are saying, no, Kalaba is just lying, it's not corruption. Can you bring evidence, bring evidence? Before we wasted no time, there were fire attack attackers everywhere. No, bring evidence, bring evidence. Before we wasted time, just the other day, the Minister of Health was saying they are going to relook the issue of the procurement of ambulances. No, bring evidence, bring evidence. There was that tender of, uh, of procuring the jets for uh, and, uh, at an exorbitant price of 400 million US dollars. No, bring evidence, bring evidence. There was refurbishing of helicopters in ZAF. There was the Minasoko scandal. There was so. The, it is a chain, land, and all kinds of things for the eight houses. It has been a chain. But they were asking me to provide evidence. But I said, time has got a, a way of, of equalizing things. And I was counting on time to absorb me. And I sit here very proudly to say, yes, what I told the Zambian people, why I resigned was not just an academic political exercise. It is something that was correct and was true. Um, many Zambians talk about corruption, um, and uh, most of the times uh, it's politicians like you who talk about a lot about corruption, and everything is in a political context. I know corruption is a, a pervasive uh, evil that goes through the fabric of the whole country. Um, uh, Peter Sen sang a song at Nkaniakangon, everywhere in Nkaniakangon. <laughs> and, um, and so that's how pervasive it's become. But yeah. whenever I ask the political leaders of Zambia, 
if President Kalava, the Republican President Kalava is sitting there, how would he solve the problem of corruption? Because as far as I'm concerned, Zambia's probably number one problem, top ten pro problems, number one problem is corruption. Look, first of all, the way you sort out corruption is you who is the head of the country coming out smart, coming out strong, and showing the whole country mm. that you broke no nonsense when it comes to issues of corruption. In the Democratic Party, we have demonstrated our seriousness with corruption because I think we're the only political party, if my memory serves me right, that has said we are going to criminalize. I mean, corruption will be an unbearable offense and will criminalize tribalism. We have come out very strong on those aspects mm. because we have realized that corruption has ate at the very fiber of our country. It has ate at the very core. Mm. And because it has done that, it has made the whole system get undermined. And one of the people that has made the system be undermined on corruption is unfortunately His Excellency the President, who um, a, a, a President Longo, who went and stood in Kalusho Kitwe and said that corruption commission is fighting me. Valendua. So when a president says Vaisis Valendua, the anti corruption commission, if you remember your excellence at that time, mm. They even withdrew a case against the dismissed minister of health who was appearing that time. They went quickly, they, they went and said, No, I think we're just withdrawing this matter altogether. Mm. When you intimidate agencies of government, they will not operate. Where I come from, Kumansa, Balando Kutirangole, Tembua, no Wembia Kuminwe, in what I say. Ule Tembua, oh, Poppy, 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 come and eat here, no Wembia Kumina, Mona. It will not come and eat your food. So, it's the same thing. You are telling the SEC, on one hand, you are telling them, can you give me evidence? That's the other day. He was telling them, the problem is that it is the police. And the president must stop this bad habit of always wanting to engulf the police in his inadequacies, in his inefficiency. Because I've seen that. He was saying, you know, it is the police who are taking time to do these cases of corruption. That is why. No. Give the police the requisite tools. Go at Lomaka's police post. See even the furniture that the police have. Go to Munali. I mean, just go to any police post and see how the police service today is struggling. How can the police be effective when you have given cadres more authority than the police? How can your police be effective when you have gone ahead to ensure that your police officers are weakened in front of people that should never even have authority over them? So, how can you fight corruption like that? When we come into government ourselves, we want the Drug Enforcement Commission to have real authority. The way they had under Levi Mwanawasa, the way they had under Michael Sata, the way they had under Dr. Chiluba and even Dr. Kaunda. Once you do that, then you are creating a platform for efficiency in the investigative wings. But today, even their allowances in the investigative wings, Mm -hmm. Today, you find that even the way they are doing their cases, it is selective. They don't know what corruption commission. They have got a pile and pile of cases. But they can't work on those cases. Why? Because so they have become inefficient. 48 houses. 48 houses up to now. We are still struggling to find out when the one is. Yeah. And, uh, but then... I think I'm a big, great believer in systems. Uh, when you create systems that fight corruption effectively, um, I think, in my in my opinion, my humble opinion, I think Kenneth Kaunda had probably the strongest systems against corruption. Mm -hmm. um, and somehow, other after Kenneth Kaunda, we've gotten weaker and weaker and weaker on fighting corruption. Um, would you be one of the advocates of uh, li uh, uh, lifestyle audits on on government on government officials? I mean, think about it. How do you allow a situation where government ministers, permanent secretaries are participants? Wrong. Now that, that is wrong. So uh, how how do you have systems that allow that? So for me, systems are very important. So the democratic party what kind of systems are you going to put in place look for us as democratic party mm. we will ensure we will ensure that every time anybody ascends to public office 
they are able to declare their assets. They that do that is one now. way. Let's do that now. We do that. Even when I was entering parliament, mm. it is a requirement. Mm. When you become a public official to do that. Mm. Every year, you should declare how much wealth you have. Once you do that, then it should raise an alarm. When your portfolio wealth dramatically increases from what you declared when you began work and to what you have in the next two years. Because you all know the salary of an MP, you know it is, it is, it is gazetted. It's an open secret. The salary even of a president is known. The salary of a vice president, all these salaries are known. So you are going to say, okay, how come you did this but now today you are doing this? How have you managed to buy all these properties? How have you managed to buy all these things? But because there is lack of seriousness and commitment on the part of those that should be implementing these things, they intimidate officers who should holding us to account. It is now free for all. Mm -hmm. It is now free for all. So Nichipa, you know what I'm winner. That's what is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, they are competing to even outdo one another as to who can as to who is more corrupt than the other. But that is sad for a country. So as DP, that's why we have said corruption will be a non bailable offense. We want to do what the, our colleagues in Singapore did at some point. Where even an invitation, uh, that minister was invited by a friend in another country. He went for holiday. The president came and fired him because he said, for that person to have invited you, it is because he knows you are in this office. Mm -hmm. If you are not in this office, you it would have been difficult. It would have been different. So we have to begin delinking ourselves. Having this insatiable greed to continuously use public monies as personal monies. That is where the challenge is. And I think it is our, ir our inescapable duty as leaders to spearhead that thing. But that is absent today in today's PF. Mm. And so the fight against corruption has remained academic. Mm. And what we see is Kwea Mulevi Hospital, where COVID patients are dying, I'm a doctor, but I'm a no, no. We can't even think of going to get um, uh, seven-year students uh, in, uh, at Apex or at the University of Zambia to go and help ameliorate the challenges at, at Levy, at UTH. Because just two weeks ago, I lost a friend, Edwin. He died because the doctors were overwhelmed. Mm. And I know that had we had, had, we had a situation where we, we were privileged to have many doctors helping our people, a life would have been saved. Mm. But today people are dying. They are dying at Levy Hospital of COVID. They are dying at UTH of COVID. Mm. Not because our doctors are not up to it, but because our doctors are not adequate to deal with escalating numbers mm. of all this. The manners we should go to those hospitals are going in uh, public pockets, are going in private pockets. And that is coming to an end after August 12th. Yeah. Now, uh, there are... Uh, there are some when you uh, resigned you said uh, it was because of this swelling uh, levels of corruption and some will say ah wabu he 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 was he was he, he, he had to get up because of an issue where he was playing lone ranger over the, our the relations with Morocco and the Sahrawi <laughs> Republic, uh, and uh, he got government in, in a very compromising situation where we end up recognizing Morocco when the rest of Africa has issues with Morocco over the Sahrawi Republic, and uh, so uh, they allege that probably you received some kickback to support Morocco and to get mo the Moroccan king to come to Zambia and do all those things. What's your response to... Uh, listen. Mm -hmm. First of all, mm. I don't get kickbacks. Mm. Kickbacks are for lesser men. I don't do that. Mm. Secondly, the issue of Morocco and the Sahrawi Republic, and I'm happy I'm talking to you, Your Excellency, mm. who was in foreign affairs with me, and you understand the issues that have been surrounding the issues of the Sahrawi in the Maghreb region. The issues of the Sahrawi and Morocco are very interesting. Zambia's position from the time that we got our independence has been to stand with the self-determination of the people of Sahrawi. That mm -hmm. has been our position. Mm -hmm. We have always sided with countries like Namibia because of the same principle of self-determination of states. Mm -hmm. We supported the liberation struggle in Namibia. Because of the self-determination principle, we stood with the people of Angola. We stood with the people of Mozambique. 
we stood with the people of South Africa. And indeed, with, with partners like those in Cuba, mm. we found ourselves fighting a similar fight, simply because we wanted countries to be independent. That is the position of Zambia. That position, unfortunately, was changed when uh, President Lung took over. Because President Satawini came, he maintained the position that Zambia would recognize the Sahrawi. After all, the Sahrawi is a member of the African Union. It's a member of the African Union. And we sit together with them in the, at, the, at the AU in Ethiopia. But the position now has changed from the time that I left. Because it's like I was a stumbling block myself. Because as foreign minister, I tried to preserve Zambia's position on important aspects mm. like those of the Sahrawi. Mm. So there is nothing somebody will accuse me of having supported Morocco. I'm not the one who opened the embassy in Morocco. They opened the embassy when I left office. So if I was supporting Morocco, why didn't they stop the opening of the embassy in Morocco? They went and opened the embassy in Morocco. They know why they've, they've opened the embassy in Morocco. Harry Kalaba was just a stumbling block because Harry Kalaba wanted to continue the self-termination of the people of the Sahrawi, and they didn't like that. So I was only a foreign minister. Mm. At the end of the day, there was a head of state. And in any case, uh, Your Excellency, you understand very well that a foreign minister cannot invite a head of state to come in a country. It is a fellow head of state who invites a head of state. The king of Morocco is a head of state of the kingdom of Morocco. And so it took another head of state of a country like Zambia to invite him. And what they discussed there between the two of them, tete a tete, only Nevin was a witness. Hmm. Now, how does that put Zambia um, in the... In, in the in the context of the African Union and, Awkward position. and whatever, because the rest of African Union is quite counter to Zambia's position. In fact, not on, don't even go far. <clears throat> when it's African Union, then you are even yeah. uh, there are some countries, yes, that have bought into the Moroccan cause. Mm. But just within the framework of SADC, mm. just within SADC, Zambia is the only country that has opened a mission in Morocco. Within SADC, Zambia is the only country. And it puts us in a very awkward position because the Sadiq position from time immemorial has been to stand with one another. Just as we have, have maintained our position with the people of Palestine, mm. that Zambia's position has always been, even when we opened ties with Israel, we have always insisted in the self-termination of the Palestinian people. That has been the position of the, the Republic of Zambia. Mm. So it baffles me that... Zambia has veered off of all SADC member states. They are the only ones who have decided to, to go in, in that direction. And it, pushes, uh, and it puts our country because we were, in fact, we were the ones who were pushing it, especially when we were chairpersons of the Nine Aligned Movement. We were the ones pushing it when we were chairpersons of the Frontline States. We were the ones pushing it at one time in 1984 mm. when Dr. Kaunda was chairperson of the OAU. We have always been pushing the issue of the Saharawan cause. But now, Zambia all of a sudden has done 360 degrees and we have looked down on Saharawi. Mm. Um, do you think there was some uh, incentives that uh, Morocco might have thrown to these countries that now re recognize them? Well, it's not for me to accuse a sovereign state mm. of uh, having thrown any incentives to anybody. But uh, with the leaders that we have, it, it would be naive of me not to suspect. Mm -hmm. With the kind of leadership that we have, it's na it would be naive of me not to think in those directions. Yeah, I had to pick that up because you were foreign affairs and these things, you were foreign affairs minister and these things have to do with Zambia's foreign policy and so forth. So uh, it, it was a thing. But let's go back to uh, a local issue. And that has to do with the Ministry of Health. Uh, that happens, uh, that's starting to look like some gravy train <laughs> that government seems to, to, to literally uh, enjoy uh, plugging into for various selfish reasons. Um, Zambia in the last few weeks has witnessed a number of dismissals, okay, starting with the Minister of Health and now permanent secretaries, um, the PPS Minister of Health, who was entangled in the uh, drug scandals and the Chikutambewe at medical stores, who has been relieved of his duties 
do these firings inspire confidence uh, that we're really fighting corruption in this country? Or what is the whole game at Ministry of Health? Because it, it, take it from uh, Kapoko, the Kapoko issue right to this very day. It seems that at Ministry of Health, there is a gravy train passing but through. But also, I think, uh, first of all, I want to bring clarity to some of these dismissals because I think President Lungu is playing politics. Uh, he fired his Minister of Health, Chitalo Chilufia. Mm. When there was a story that was making rounds that Kuliva Hani Bitin went to Parliament, mm -hmm. you recall that our President Bari Kana, our President Bala Ndijokutila, EI, don't involve me. Movacha Nivo. Leave the investigative wings to do it. Mm. Two days later, the president who had said that folk were involved in my issues, Yantuan Kanyayo, but you and I have heard, Gutila, if you are a minister, you are a minister, you are a minister, you are a expired drugs, you are a minister, 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 Na wale printa matisho na, na wale imina convention yuko. So, ba mfomo inso waze bige, ba ndo kuti ila apa, chimbonfye ina, hake nika China o kamiti. Because, ba president wali ishiwe kuti ila imitisha wola. From as far back as October, he knew that there, were, there was a thing like this. And ba president wene, he has been jogging, he has been with that guy who is the head of uh, the same company, he's been jogging with him. We have seen pictures at, with him at state functions, with him jogging uh, every other morning. So he knew all this story. So he does not care for him, whether they are drugs, they are on a market or not. What has concerned him so much was the fact that But to some extent, because Minister of Health, as you've rightly said, we've been hearing scandals after scandals. Ambulances. It's ambulances. We bought more expensive ambulances than in Tuanikani. We did the refurbishment of the hospital Kuja, uh, ku Minasoko at an exorbitant price. We have been procuring defective Chankani medicines with the Minister of Health. The president has kept quiet. Why all of a sudden he took interest? It tells you that there's a problem. But I'm telling you that when you take over government, there will be a commission of inquiry on these procurements. And we'll find out the truth. We'll find out the truth. Because Chitaluchi Rufiaon is on. Chitaluchi Rufiaon is on. Cannot make some of those gigantic decisions he was making without the authority of somehow is the appointing authority. And to pay, if you want to pay manufacturing license on a Sunday, now na tender by winner. Pakana na zizi zizi. The following morning you win a tender. Anna jogging naba naba president. Atu shikwa kako te kalu kalu vira mumush. Ichi mbu ichi mene mfui. So when you see things like this, just know that the story is deeper than you can imagine. The firing of those PSAs, they are hundwinking you because we've already known that Stadi Mwale, Stadi Mwale wanted to stand in Masaiti. The same guy who was at Ministry of Defense, when they heard that there are scandals which are rocking Ministry of Defense, the president removed him and took him to a holding position at Cabinet Office. Nombala tumfa Stadi Mwale lefoku imina kulufuwa nyamapa PF. It's a requirement in the civil service regulations that you must resign. He should have resigned by now. should have resigned by now. So, Baba Fuago fit to expedite the process. But we have a politics here. Ba Bishop Chomba, as you know, even last time, we have a focus on the people who are in the world. We have a focus on the people who are in the world. We have a focus on the people who are in the world. We have a focus on the people who are in the world. So, firing Chomba, Kuba Fuago, we have a focus on the people who are in the world. Go and fight Brian Mushimba. So, Brian, my brother, you are in trouble <laughs> because they have unleashed somebody. They have unleashed the Bishop Mushimba people mm. on you. So, all those are cosmetic things. The only one no about them fish. You can say to about them fish. No, we are in the health. Health, yes. PS, uh, 
uh, um, what's the name? She's got a very she's long a very name. Long name, Mulale. Uh, or something at like that, you know. So mm. she was fired, and you can tell maybe why she was fired. Mm. That's the problem that we have. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to uh, get study to stand in, what do you Study, we have heard that stand in Kulufuanyama. We have also heard that Wachomba Koyo, And then we have heard that Ababa Antoine Kanyaba, who, who else was uh, was relieved of his duties as PS? How do you um, field a candidate who has not built a maternity ward for nine years after being paid by government? Study Mwale's company was awarded the, the, the contract. But Study Mwale, mm -hmm. Study Mwale was appointed by the president mm -hmm. to help the president raise money. That's why Study Mwale was appointed. Yes. Study Mwale was basically there to help the president to say he should be raising money doing AMA contracts see, and so that he can be putting to help raise money. That's why he was appointed, that guy. Is that a fact? I, I'm telling you that you do your investigations. Mm -hmm. We have people giving us information. And me, I don't just speak from without. Study Mwale's appointment was tied to him using his position, which is a piece of office, to see how he can be raising resources mm -hmm. for their party PF. So, now, first of all, company, how can a permanent secretary, will you please understand that question? Mm -hmm. How can a permanent secretary, how can a permanent secretary have a company Naena what a company to begin supplying is competing with ordinary Zambians. Ni PS. Usa mm. in another ministry, ni PS Munanko Quot. So Bala Bakumani. Maybe my and Miabo. They'll go and discuss it to mind on Miabo. Fella put a mind on Miabo. In that fashion, they are disadvantaging an ordinary Zambian to supply. That's why this country has a problem. The more we even remember leadership called Yabakaunda. Because the Wale Suminisha. Ngwala mm. bomba government, salapo bomba government and avoid getting entangled in businesses. Mm. My own father was a minister mm. in Kaunda government. Mm. He never had a single business. Why the Kaunda was doing that was to avoid conflict of interest. Why are bomba shani bu PS? Ukuri PS, ukuri contractor. In the morning you're signing yama fa yama files. In the morning again wala fala zombo to guandi. You can't even do that. Those are jokes. Mangalwa yo. That is why you need a serious leadership in this country to redeem you people, to redeem Zambians out of the current quagmire. Because if we remain like this, no overtake. Look at what he's doing. So all those appointments and now I don't feel you, now I don't feel you. Just do a bit of scratching on top. Mwalasa Angati, it is all fake. It's all fake. It's all aimed at uh, pushing the president's political agenda because he does nothing, our president without lacing it with politics. Mm -hmm. That is why we are complaining today, Bachelaisia, that even the appointments is doing today, they are tilted only towards two provinces. Niku Eastern Province, Niku Nwapula, Niku Northern. The same region. The other regions are being excluded. What kind of one Zambia, one nation is that? What kind of a country is that? Because you cannot run a country based on a sectarian kind of or regional kind of overview. And they're doing it because he thinks he wants to strengthen is purported strongholds. There is no stronghold for them in Wapula anymore. There is no stronghold for them on the Copper Belt. There is no stronghold for them in Northern Province, in Muchinga, in the Eastern Province. There is no stronghold for them. So he has remained with that same view. That's why the appointments now they are heavily tilted towards those regions, hoping that the people of those regions are going to support him at the exclusion of Western Province, Central Province, Lusaka province, uh, uh, northwestern province, southern province, mm. these are regions that are suffering mm. because they are viewed to be anti-PF. But that is coming to an end because we are one Zambia, one nation. We need to work together. Mm. And there is no way we can have some regions busy celebrating and other regions are saying no. I am coming from the northern region. But I know that my own brother w was married in the southern region. So I've got nieces and nephews there. Some of them could not even register to vote because they were disenfranchised, because they took materials there late. Now, what kind of a country is that? Yeah. So now, we are you, you've uh, touched on uh, the coming elections and so forth. But before we get there, I wanted to get your view uh, on something that's been in, uh, quite interesting. Um, regarding the mining sector 
What is your view of uh, the 100% acquisition of shares in Mopani? And do you really think um, Zambia can run those mines? Look, I think for me, the issues of Mopani, mm. the issues of Mopani uh, should be looked at two fronts. One, is this the government which has got a date mm. of 27.4 billion US dollars? compared to its gross national income, which is standing at 22 billion US dollars, is this the government which can manage to take over a, a company like Mopani with all its overheads? The answer is no. Is there significant strength right now in the PF leadership? Is there independent leadership in there that can manage Mopani? The answer is a no. Secondly, when you look at Mopani, and how the acquisition is being done. Government is going to an institution called Kalisa. Kalisa is going to give them the $1.5 billion that they have proposed to procure, to procure Mopani. Kalisa is a company that is owned by Glencoe. Glencoe is a company that owns Mopani. So what has basically happened is that government has gone to, has gone to buy has gone to borrow money mm -hmm. from a company owned by Glencoe, which is the owner of the company they're buying from Mopani. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, what kind of a transaction is that? And then there's a fixed amount that government will have to be giving a Glencoe over a period of 15 years as they sell their copper. Copper prices fluctuate. Mm -hmm. For them, it will remain fixed. Meaning that this deal, you can say whatever you want to say, about this deal but this deal is ill-timed it is only meant it is only meant to help the pf find ways of raising money for the elections it has got nothing to do with is it the 15,000 uh, workers working at mopani it has got nothing to do with that mm. they want to play politics for now mm. they have got nothing to do with them what did they tell us about the KSCM? About KSCM? But President we have got a, we, we've got an investor on KCM. Today, KCM has been split into two. There is no plan from our colleagues. But we are starting to legalize marijuana. Marijuana will use it. We are not going to minister We are not going to use it. We are not going to use it. Adam Pogwati, no. He married Joanna. He came under Ministry of He uh, came Ministry of Health. We are going to take any. So they are outdoing each other. What a pangeshi nginani. Zambia has become a sanguapo. It charges some kind of sanguapo number. You can't tell me back a couple of people left for a This is coming to an end because we are restoring dignity and mm -hmm. physical financial discipline mm -hmm. will be instituted. And uh, the, before I open the phone lines. Um, the acquisition of shares by the IDC uh, in Marco Polo tiles is another issue that has been uh, a topic of discussion in the last few days. Is it within the mandate of IDC to be acquiring shares in companies that are barely even five years old, less than five years old, three years old, actually? So when you look at the Industrial Development Corporation in IDC, mm -hmm. For me, even their role is not really clear because IDC they should have been... no, You know what? Mm. The intentions of IDC mm. at that time mm. were very clear. But today, when you said IDC is getting entangled in things like that, mm. you get concerned and you get worried. Mm. IDC, just like any other, like Vazesco, like uh, ZNBC, where you were, mm. like all those institutions, they have been turned into institutions now to propagate uh, the agenda of a failed regime in the name of the PF. You know, and it is sad. But the original idea of the Industrial Development Corporation was to enhance, exacerbate the efforts of parastatos. We should have seen parastatos like Zesco now doing very well because now IDC is there. And the, the president is the chairman. That was the whole idea. It was to immediately deal with challenges in the in the parastatos. You know, the uh, Indozambia Bank, the uh, Zafiko. Those parastatos should begin uh, operating at their optimum was because they have got the ear of the Was it a the wise uh, move to get the president to be chairman of IDC? 
I think it is. I, I, I think it is because he is the head of state and uh, Parastatos. I mean, normally executives of Parastatos are appointed by who are appointed by the president, and uh, so, so it's only important so, that so he should be chairman of every Parastato company. Look, I think when you even go to countries like the Communist Republic of China, you know you are in China. Hmm. That it is the authorities in China who are heading those uh, Parastatos, and you see, it's not even a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. But it is the intention of those that you have put in the positions there mm. who begin using their influence to amass wealth. Mm. They begin using their influence to begin changing the positions of what the IDC should really stand for. That's where we are mm. today, like everything else. Mm. Well, you are tuned in to the Hot Seat program uh, on, this, uh, 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 on this series of uh, the Hot Seat. We have uh, the president of the Democratic Party, was also former minister of foreign affairs in the PF government and um <laughs> the PF government the PF government yes now he's he's president of the democratic party who are aspiring to lead the country in all, from August um the phone lines are now open you can get us on 0974 870 or 0950 955 877. 0950 955 877. You're listening to the Hot Seat on Hot FM 87.7. It's time for you to call now and get involved. Call now and get involved. Yep. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, welcome to the hot seat. And uh, may we know who's calling, and um, uh, then you can go into your question. Yeah, this, this is Safia Siluta, calling me from Osaka. You say your name again? Safia Silutaga. Safia Silutaga. Yes. Okay. President Kaba, good morning. Safia Silutaga, how are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you? It is well with my soul. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you are speaking very well. Now, I just have a question. As Zambians, do you think we have the capacity to run the mines as it is happening now under the PF regime? Number two, over the permanent secretaries, any say about the, is it done in under normal circumstances or just the thinking of us Zambians, the president himself? Because the changes are that's happening too much and we are running into the uh, very soon we'll go into the elections we we do, I, so don't, do I don't know whether your second question is clear can you say your second question or clarify your second question please yeah my question is yeah is the firing of human secrets done under normal faith by the president or just for drinking us or do you, are you asking the legality of the appointments yes. or the firings Yes, the firing of the permanent secretaries uh -huh. Okay. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Pathias, for calling. Mm. Uh, we'll take in two more calls uh, so that um, we, we allow um, uh, President Kalava to respond to to as many questions as possible so to sh to quicken the process. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. So welcome to the program. May we know who's calling? Thank you so much. And then I was speaking to one man, Tembo. Mr. Tembo. Yes, Mr. Tembo. Please go ahead, um, Mr. Tembo. Mr. Tembo, I know you like to ask me, say, why is mankind in a mix of I'm not in a mix I'm not in a mix It is well, uh, okay. mm. Yes. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, first of all, uh, I think uh, I don't agree with you when you say that uh, the appointment are tribal, where they are based on um, ethnicity. No, I didn't I say think, that. Uh, I didn't say that, Mr. Tembo. I, say I said the uh, rate at which we are having only same people being, uh, uh, I mean, being appointed from the same region is worrying. No, but from the same region. I think that some weeks back, the president appointed the uh, Honorable Rafael Mekachinga, and you said nothing. As PS. You see. No, 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 as minister. Mr. Na Rafael Nagashin. Okay. As minister, you said nothing. Because uh, you saw that, uh, you, you discovered that you didn't get any political mileage from that. You, you don't pay that. 
So I think uh, it's not been tribal because your, your perspective is tribal. You sort of looking at that point, uh, that point is as Zambians. They are Zambians before anything. I'm trying, so, to, I'm trying to figure out how uh, Mr. Kalawa is being tribal. I don't that. know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Can you clarify Thank your, you. your Thank issues? Thank you, Excellency. Mr. Yes, sir. One thing is uh, uh, the appointment that you know, from one uh, region. No. Would you, say, would you say Laura Meaty was being tribal when she pointed out the same fact? It's the same thing. We're all talking about the same thing. Uh, they were being the tribal. The difference is the same. The difference is the same. Okay. So, uh, let's proceed. Uh, let's proceed. Yes. Uh, I think um, the DP uh, has nothing left to offer because Mr. Kamala was in government and uh, he had an opportunity to whisper into the present period. You know, if you know that the president was one one or another, he was going to advise him. So I look at him, so to say this, but I look at him to Lucifer, he became uh, jealousy of the president that, 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 that God was getting. So Mr. Kama wanted to get the president that the president is getting by forming his own political party and hoping that he become president as well. And uh, his party is very well, trust me, because it was founded on lies. Because what you have said, I think the uh, best friend prophet, Bushiri, who has some cases in South Africa. I don't know if it's says or not. So I think uh, it's that the foundation is wrong because it was based on propaganda, lies, fake prophecy. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, he he is even going to Bushiri now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, that's a question you have to answer later. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, let's good take morning, in another. Good morning, one. good morning, um, Ambassador Chilesia. Good morning, sir. Then, uh, Mr. Uh, President uh, Kalaba, good morning. Good morning, sir. This is SG calling here. SG, okay. Cool. Uh, his yes. name is SG. SG. Mm. President Kalaba, how? What's Prophet Bushiri doing? Hello. How is how's Prophet Bushiri doing? I might not know how he's doing, but I think he's doing fine. Why? Uh, Why do you ask? Uh, Why do I ask? Yeah. Why shouldn't I ask? Why would he know? I'm just asking. Okay. Why would I know? Why would he know? He's your papa. I'm just asking. Okay, if he's my papa. Okay, if he's my papa. How does that hate you? Uh, who said that? How does that affect you? Uh, but who said that? Who said that I'm affected? SG, you are uh, you are who asking about Prophet Bushiri. Just as I've asked you. So I have told you I don't I know, but he must be doing fine. And so, can you now you ask your question? Okay. You have one side. So, what is the issue? Okay. Na, na, <laughs> so, he has finished his question. Okay. 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 Yes, yes, yes. 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 a simple question. Is that, how, is the, how is our prophet doing? Is, that, is that the only question you wanted to ask? No, no, no I haven't even asked. Oh. It was my preamble. Okay, please go ahead it and ask the question. Okay. I hope we are clear, President Karaba. It was a preamble. I don't know why you are getting emotional. Okay, go ahead and ask the question. Yeah, President Karab, I've got a question. Uh, I just want to understand. Uh, I just want to understand how you are feeling on uh, on the completion of the KGL Kafuero uh, uh, hydropower plant. Are you happy that uh, the PF under President Ed Galungu for that project? What is your stance on uh, on that, President Karab? Are you are you are you are you impressed with the project? That you know, actually, lot 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 shading, lot shading is coming to not, to attend. Are you are you are you happy? Right. President Karaba, is, is there any other? Are you question? happy that lot shading is coming to an end? Yeah, is that uh, the full question? You're finished. Yes, I just want to understand if Mr. Yeah. President Karaba is happy that lot shading yes, is coming you, to an end. Yes, you'll answer it when he's answering all the other questions. So you're one of the questions. Y yours is one of the questions you'll attend to after. Yes, you finish. I, I really want uh, I really okay. want him to answer on that one, please. That, all, uh, all right. That's the idea. Because uh, okay. I, I just want to understand, and, and the reason I'm asking is simple because uh, uh, it's very rare that we hear uh, these uh, pol political leaders appreciating the projects of government. Yes, so okay. I've, I've just he, he, on he was uh, in government, so he, I'm sure, also wanted to, to, to get credit on things that they were doing right. So yes, generally, uh, so please, right? yeah. I, I, I'll follow, I just want him to tell, to tell me how he's feeling yeah, about the uh, will be coming to an end. He, he will, but you have to get off the line for him to answer you. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Now we we have another caller. Uh huh. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you, um, my fellow former diplomat? Um, it's my ma my my sister-in-law. Um, yes, uh, that honourable Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. 
Mm. I would like to send the word of condolences to you people from Eastern Province mm. for the most of my father in law. Mm-hmm. Yes. So sad. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Mamma, me pity much again. I am quite my dear to mother. First, let me commend you for your stance not to get recycled politicians like me. I stand with you on that one, and I give you kudos because I'm one of those people who also don't believe that I should become a political prostitute to drive a point. However, are you aware that your political advisor, because you talk strongly over rejecting us who have been in politics before, and they are right, but you are, are you aware that your political advisor, my brother-in-law, Mr. Honor Bonzoa, was a member of parliament for the heritage. He was given a deputy ministerial statement and he, he neglected the part which he took him to parliament. What has made him different from us? Why have you accepted him? Because I think he's worth that some of those people you are rejecting don't the basis of that belongs to other political parties. What's your comment? So it, you. it's, it's your it's your position that uh, Ned is always recycled. All right, all right. Uh, maybe you should answer those uh, three, four questions, and then we'll move on to the next batch. Uh, I'll be very fast. Well, Pethias, uh, do we have the capacity to run the mines? I, I think I did answer that question. Alexander Gutiela, no, we don't have. We don't have, we are st- we've got a date we are struggling with, and we cannot run mines again to go and we are going to borrow more monies. There would have been a better way of dealing with this issue. If I was president, there would have been a more sober manner in which we could have handled the issue of uh, Mobani. For me, I think I recall that, is it uh, in 2006 or so, uh, Your Excellency, uh, we had a similar problem with Mopani. Mm-hmm. President Manawasa had the bosses of Mopani, uh, that was Glencoe, fly into Zambia. Mm-hmm. And he had a round table talk with them. And they resolved the issues on Mopani. And they went back to work. What is different uh, in this particular instance? Because Mopani had placed their workers on care and maintenance because of the COVID situation. They said we are not operating at full throttle. I think it was at that time that His Excellency should have shown leadership by ensuring that he sits again on a round table with our colleagues in Mopani. But again, that never happened. What we heard is that all they are procuring, uh, they want to procure Mopani and run the mines, which I find a bit uh, uh, not uh, to being uh, very honest. Mm. M- many places are being fired. I think the issue of permanent sectors, I had explained it. Mm. That now Bishop Chomba, Bishop Chomba is, but if you have a lot of so those are politicians that's why the government is like this because you are getting politicians to become permanent secretaries to become civil servants when i become president we want directors in ministries directors in ministries to be rising because they are getting frustrated these directors Civil servants are now frustrated. That's why when we come into government, we'll ensure that civil servants are given their line of progression. Because it is clear, Your Excellency, you know you are a civil servant as a, as a, as our um, ambassador in the USA. You know very well that your reporting channel is the permanent secretary mm-hmm. who reports to the secretary to the cabinet. A minister does not report to SC. A minister reports to the president. But today you have mixed these things. I mean, she has samba, a young lady, no. I mean, she has a good timunu, a young lady, samba. You get a permanent secretary who should be uh, advising the minister. He will have to set us directly. PSA will have to set us directly. That is wrong, wrong, wrong. Even directors like yourselves, we are becoming now political tools to be used. That is going to come to an end because the civil service has been humiliated. It has suffered because of the political bureau, political bureau. That does not understand how the civil service works. He now is a civil servant for 10 years. So I understand how the civil service works. Then you've got Mr. Tembo. He was saying, when Wanakachinda, the wise man Tembo, when Wanakachinda was appointed, he said nothing. Me, I said a lot of things. I said, Wanakachinda is MMD. Mwaya wuna wa MMD. Mwashaba wa honorable malama kwanchivia. 
who was PF Mwabasha, Mwabula MMD, Mwapela Bu Minister. I said that. Ba malamanga ba ima mparlamenti diyonse kula atashaba lungu. Kula atashaba lungu. Wenda ba malamanga ba ima mpala menti diyonse kula atashaba lungu. Bala ba pela bu minister. Vaya vula fena kachi ndoyo. Efida ndando kutila. Ngole peka luno mchede muminwe. Ukabwe la pofi. Mwadiku ataba ntu wanika ni ukuchifuna wudi wa mecha ponde. Bala fuwa bu minister kwa chikatwishi. But. Bata ngerisha fekuli bu minister. Wawa pele bu minister wa mecha ponde. Baka sandwe. Fia di shupa fionse fio. Vaya vula MMD. Udi antu wanika ni nakachi nda. O wa pela bu antu wanika. And I'm happy. My sister mpiri is listening. Kwa nama yuwa mbipiri, mwa yavula wana kachinda. Mwa yuwa mbipiri, mwa yavula wana Mwa shanko, mwa, mwa shaba honre bongonga, kukaputa. Mwa sha hastings chansa, kuchimba milonga. Mwa sha, ama emu peas. Ave, kasha mungu lako na nguye mpi waku uyu independent. O mwasa yena nguye biuten, uyu waku mufurila. Ama mwuse ndua uyu ndewa ya mfamu kanga. Ama mwuse ndua uyu ya, tumwa yuwa te, pantu uyu mtu na mwuna nguye nkondo. Nomba, efire milangu mchachi na nyifi. Vaya vula na kachinda. Vasha wa malama. Hawa pepeka luno mchede muminwe. Vaya vula na kachinda. So, I have said about this thing. Then he said, kalaba you were part of Valungu. Nista wabevele. Dion senda la anda ine. Kwa pata chila kubea. Kwa pata chila kubea. Bachila isi ya mwadu kwa tenga anda. Ndapele example don't say it. Mula sungo mwipa wenpanga anda imwe. Yolo mwipuwa wenu alando kutila kumgo shinde foo kudiaka penta. Mwepe ni wanga nda mwepuwa yifisashi. Usho wala ipigrapo. Udiyo mwepuwa mwepuwa sungo lefuwa ka penta na mwepuwa mwepuwa yifisashi. Yifisashi fiala. Yifisashi fiala ipigwa. Because you're the owner of the house. Me, I was only a minister. My job was to advise. I could not go beyond advising. And I've been, I, I've been telling wise man. Every time, wise man uchinje ishina. I've been telling you. Wise man. Apere, apere, asha. Asami kwa ipusa indoko nedia wise man. Pantu, even last time I was on that session, he called me. And I explained the same thing to him. I said, wise man, when you are on a bus, leaving Lusaka going to uh, Kabwe, the bus driver will determine at what speed he will be running that bus. He will determine whether he will make a stop over Pachubombo. Or you will not stop at Chubombo. You, you are a passenger. You can advise me which about bus driver. In any day, I could interview. Which should go bus? I'll go to a driver. I'll go to a So you cannot force driver. Which is a good person to go to a I advised him. He didn't listen. I had to resign. Pantu. Ichika dia pansa ka musumba wawadi. When you see that things are not going your way, you move on. And that's the only thing I've done. And I have moved on. And I've been on these radio programs. Not one day have you heard me even insult President Lungu. Because President Lungu and I worked together, granted. And he appointed me twice as his Minister of Foreign Affairs, granted. Three, I was always in the first batch of those he was appointing, meaning he had confidence in me. And that is why even when I resigned, I said, I'm not going to fight him as a person. That is not for me. I'm a Christian. I said... I will only deal with issues. And that's why I said it's corruption. I didn't say over President Walia Monique, if you are president, I am respecting him. Because as I've always said, President Lungu is 20 years older than me. That is one. Secondly, President Lungu is the head of state of this country. Whether I like him or I don't like him, he is the head of state until the 12th of August. And therefore, I have to respect him so that even him, when I take over from him, when he'll be handing over to me, the same way he handed over to me when I took over from him at office of the vice president, because he was deputy minister there, I took over from him, and I'm taking over from him again at uh, State House this year. And I don't want him to, have, to be looking down on me when I become head of state. I want him to respect me, return the favor that I'm doing to him. SG said, Akalaba, how is Bushiri? Now listen, maybe he's right. Maybe he was genuine uh, when he was asking that question because maybe he has seen me with Prophet Bushiri. When I was foreign minister, it was not only Prophet Bushiri that I was in interacted with. I took it upon myself as a child of God to meet different men of God, many men of God. I was even meeting pastors' fellowships in Kanyama, in uh, Mrs., in everywhere I was meeting them as foreign minister because I believe myself. What the psalmist says in Psalms 127 verse 1, the psalmist says, unless the Lord builds a house, the builders will build, but it will be in vain. I've always believed that this country is a country that is a Christian nation. 
And it is not for me to judge a man of God like Prophet Bushiri or any other prophet. That is why I have beef with the Ministry of Religious Affairs because they have anointed themselves to begin saying, this one is a fake prophet, that one is a fake pastor, that one is a fake... When did we see the... Uh, when did we see my very good mother, Madam Sumairi, being anointed with that uh, spiritual gift of knowing who is fake and who is not fake? That is not for me. What are you going to do with that ministry? When that, ministry that ministry is gone. It's gone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. We have the church mother bodies who should be dealing with the issues of uh, a sacrology in this country. It is not for a ministry like religious affairs. Those civil servants who are in that ministry will be taken to other line ministries. They'll go in those line ministries. And then maybe, um, uh, uh, Madam Sumairi, we are going to maybe see if she can go back to bread of life, because that's where she is. She should be helping Bishop Imakando preach the word of God, because Bishop Imakando is saving lives, helping lives go to Christ. So we need, he needs a lot of hands to help him. He doesn't need people to be uh, anointing themselves and saying, no, you, you are fake. So Prophet Bushir has a very large following, by the way. He has a very large following. And people like him who are despising him. The Bible says, touch not my anointed. I rest my case. Then he says, how are you feeling on the completion of Kafu Eloa? You know, sometimes it is not good to speak out of ignorance. Do you know how much money government is spending on the Kafu Eloa? Do you know how much money we have spent? If that four billion US dollars was used on bringing up a solar plantation in this country, do you know would have lit the entire country with, on solar? I have been to Rwanda where they have a huge solar plant. You spend four billion. This is a project that President Manawasa was hastened to approve. This is a project that President Rupia Banda could not approve because of the money involved. It's a project that President Sata was hastened to approve. And it was a project President Lungu quickly approved. It to tells you a story. To his credit or not to his credit? You will see what will happen when a commission of inquiry is appointed. By who? By Harry Kalam. Mm -hmm. After 12th August. Okay. Your Excellency, Zambia as a poor country cannot afford to spend such gigantic amounts like this. We could have spent much less money because I know that this amount, the $4 billion, I'm talking about on the Kafiwe Law, would have spent, from what I know, would have spent somewhere around $1.2 billion. It has come to $4 billion. Completely decided they can get their whatever was getting, whoever is getting their cuts. But the Commission of Inquiry will tell us the truth because this kind of behavior will not be allowed. As to whether power cuts will stop or not, I don't know whether that will affect, because we are still experiencing power cuts. So how do I feel about it? Well, well, how I feel is that I'm waiting for packets to finish. And the people like your SG, I want just to give them a piece of advice. Sir, you are living in Zambia. You are not living elsewhere. Sir, you have got relatives in Lady Manawasa Hospital. You have, if you don't have, you know somebody who is in those hospitals. Let the ministers who are getting graduate in the next four weeks speak. You are only getting a cramp from them. And you pride yourself by calling yourself SG. Let those who are eating defend themselves. They'll get gratuity. They'll not even give you a single way. Maybe they'll give you a 200 kwacha if you're lucky. But is that what you can betray? Your relatives who are dying in, in Levi Mwanawasa. Is that what can make you betray? Your relatives dying like there is no government in place. Honestly. Honestly, I leave that also for you to answer and how you feel that people are dying in Levi Manawasa because money is meant to uh, bring the standards up are being misappropriated. Mm -hmm. Deputy SG, my sister, I'm happy that you, uh, you are still there. But I don't know you ask, you are talking about uh, Nelson Inzoa. Nelson Inzoa is not our advisor. Uh, Nelson Inzoa is our, is our national chairman. Mushimayo, first of all, I have not refused to go and know she refer a marriage cycle politician. I, I have not said that. If you are not land, I mean, but they are not going to recycle politicians like my mother, Dora Siria. Why are they going to Those ones cannot come in the Democratic Party. But Dora and the Baka will not be able to get the support. 
but for her to come and say na ali muri government na government sa muri government no mune nde toroka abobo tule kana mudi pia wa palanga wada wa mayo kwa li wa wantu wa mayo wa mbipiri I don't even know why you're saying like me as a good politician. You are not even a good politician because you've not been in charge of any government ministry where you made fundamental decisions to tilt the affairs of police. But kudia wa mukwe te mama no kushana mwe shiva ukuti la ava ba di kowela ba na ba tule kana because Nelson Inzoa ta kowela Nelson Inzoa is a clean guy Nelson Inzoa even if he he, he left ku heritage from ku heritage ko aya ku unto anika ne ku he didn't even defect from heritage. He was still a deputy minister appointed as minister because there was no by election. If he had defected from Kudakuba to Kudakubushi, there would have been a by election. He didn't defect. What heritage? I mean, what Nelson Inzowa did was he was appointed together with the Gladys Nyarongo. They were all in heritage. They were all appointed, but they kept their positions. If they had moved away from their parties, and the Constitution of Zambia allows the president to appoint, na kachinda lelo alele ya sausage. Aleli efuma pai. But ni MMD. Fia pusana shani. So, tule efi pusanya. Netson inzowa remains credible. Because takuwa wa omushi. You cannot build a village naba echeweka weka. There must be somebody. Efi ya walanda jimuchi wata mula mkaya. There must be somebody who should tell you. Efi ya omushi wa ikele. There must be somebody to tell you. Kutila, this is the way we should be living in government. Kufile kudu ya wale kanya. Ba machine dinga watu wabe fast ya watawe. Teka nya hao, wanko wangete if she government iwomba, nifi. There must be others. And we have a lot of elders in our party. We have a lot of elders in our party who have served with distinction. They are, they are there in the party. When you look at our DNC, our DNC, we have got people who have served, not only as politicians, people who have served this government, uh, this country, in their various fields with distinction. And they are still serving. Uh, with us in DP, because we believe you need a blend of both the young and the old to put Zambia where it should be. Yes, you are tuned in to the Hot Seat Program. You can get us on 0974-870-877 or 0950-955-877. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Uh, welcome to the Hot Seat Program. May we know who's calling? This is Malola Henry. Malola. Malola. Okay, Henry, please go ahead. My president, my brother, how are you? Manola, good to hear from you. Yeah, I'm um, truly humbled to speak to you, my president. Thank you, dear. Yeah, you see, I just want to uh, get your views there uh, of um, the, um, that bridge over, oh, which is at the there. Ali Kinkata. Yes, and. Uh, the statement that uh, Bishop Lupa said over reading the elections. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Let's take in another caller. And Malola, you need to send me your uh, you need to send me your number, Malola, after this. I think you've got my number. Just send me a message, eh? I want to talk to you. All right. We have another caller. Yes. Ah. Good morning. Ah, order. Order. Uh, Francis from the Antica is uh, calling you from Osaka. Good morning, Mr. Chilayo. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning, President Kalava. My friends, it's uh, much more. I am quite sure to you. <laughs> yes. President Kalava, I want to find out from you uh, how you do the tribal balancing of the tribe. Because we've got it's almost 72 or so tribe class in Zambia. How are you going to balance all the tribes who have a bigger influence in what is happening within our country? Because why I'm saying so is to find out how you do it. Count the in the wrong way. And yes, color, I think it's a big way. Now, to mention something, what has uh, made me talk about this is you said in the Western province, they are not properly represented, they say, uh, within the, the, the government of uh, President Rungu. Now, the number two position in the land is held by somebody from the Western province. So, I he's trying that his level best. Yeah, he's trying his level best. Make sure that every country, every part of this country is uh, represented. But at the end of the day, I don't know how you do it. When you talk of the alliance, the alliance, you are not part of it, but I, there was a, one, one secretary general from the opposition party, the opposition party, who we asked him maybe at some point to say, President Kalava refused to join new people. At the end of the day, what are you, what can you say about that? And then he said, no, President Kalava is selfish, he's somebody who, 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 who keeps himself. At the end of the day, there is an underhive politician in terms of presidential level, so we're not worried about him joining the alliance or not. So what do you say about that? And then lastly, uh, what I want to say, 
expression of President Kalaba. At least you've been giving uh, solutions better than some of these opposition leaders that have been there for a long time. There, I give you credit. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of good things that President Lungu has done that all of you in the opposition should take note that not all Zanans are ignoring the good things that President Lungu has done. At the end of the day, make sure your manifestos in the... Okay, sorry, we lost him, but I think you got the gist of wha where he mm -hmm. was going mm -hmm. with that one. So let's take in another call, and then you can respond to the three. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, morning, Uncle Chilaizia. Can I call you Uncle Joe? You can call me Uncle Joe. All right. Mm. How are you? I'm very well. Welcome to the okay. program. Thank you very much. Mm. What's your morning, name, Morning, uh, my name is Chofia. Chofia, okay. Yeah. Morning, President Kalawa. Uh, morning, Wachov. Yeah. Uh, you talked about uh, the Mopani issue. Uh, so my question is that uh, how do you think we would have handled the Mopani issue? Honestly, I think the government and uh, all the relevant stakeholders in engaged Glenco, but they were not listening. And they were on the verge of sending home more than 15,000 miners. But uh, these decisions, they are uh, with this decision. But uh, the, these jobs were preserved. Yeah. And for now, my question is that as a DP, how would you have handled this issue? What better deal would you have come up with? Yeah, if you can just give me some specifics. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, what are you doing about political violence? I know that uh, you're not the biggest culprit uh, yourselves. Uh, in most cases, it's the PF and the UPND. But uh, what are you doing to make sure that the political landscape is safer? Are you engaging the, re the relevant uh, stakeholders to end this violence? Because uh, most people are scared to join politics, scared to join the DP, because they think it's not safe and yeah. uh, they're not protected. Like uh, yourself, last question, Mr. Chofia. Uh, sorry, this one is personal, and I think it was also asked by uh, uh, the, some caller. I don't know his name, Malolo or something. Uh, what do you say about the sentiments attributed to Father Lopupa? The statement that if it means rigging the elections, we should do that just to make sure some, some individual doesn't... Uh, become president. That's a very serious statement. And uh, as a leader aspiring to be president, I want to hear your comment because for all I know, he might have been talking about you, Mr. Kalala, and the DP. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So you can go ahead and answer that. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, Manola Henry, uh, I didn't get him quite clear on the issue of the bridge. Well, he... There was he, some noise. He no, he just um, pointed out two issues. Uh, the bridge has been a center of controversy on its safety and uh, there was a time when people said it is a death trap they fixed the and somebody and said they should, they should bring it down mm. and then bishop chomba. A, a, a bishop chomba did that then he, he had to apologize or walk back his statement then they fixed the bridge now it is back in in play um, and then there was another issue, I think. Um, then the other issue was Father Lupupa. Father Lupupa and uh, the statements he made. I don't know whether you caught those on. First of all, on the bridge. Mm. On the bridge, I think uh, experts had said, and I think uh, the one I found here was here mm. before when yeah. I was coming, Mr. Ngan. Ebongan. Ebongan, who is part of the engineers. He's the president of the Engineering Institute of Yes, uh, mm. I think they had issued a statement, and they said that it was not correct. Uh, that bridge was not done by the specific standards and the Minister of Law Government then uh, Honorable uh, who is this uh, he, uh, Charles Banda mm -hmm. uh, said you know it, it, uh, the PS should not have talked like that and I heard he was hammered right left and center Bishop Chomba the rest is history uh, what is true is that uh, it is sad that substandard projects like that are passing and the ones who should be uh, annoyed and angry are the ones who are saying, no, this is okay, this is okay. So it tells you that uh, the levels of mediocrity are quite high. On Father Lupupa, what are the sentiments that uh, he has said? I think there is... Uh, well, I think the basic gist of it was that if we have to rig the elections to ensure that one of the candidates doesn't win, we need to rig the But elections. to rig them in favor of who? Uh, the current regime. Father Lupupa can say that. That is in the media. Father Lupa said that. Because you are still too much of yourselves until you break down. Until you begin to see that there is only one of us. Until you have the vocabulary of love. Until you begin to condemn violence every time you open your mouth. 
As long as God sees this one is dangerous. Chawa matu achita rigi ama elections. Huku chila bambi waka teke. Mula wanda fena muwebele. If wenga tuwaisa mpawa muka chimo na tukamikaka. Who would want you to rule? When we know that when you begin to rule, we are going to be scampered. Hmm. That's a very serious statement. I, I, I mean, although he's not, from what he's saying, I mean, that is, the, we don't fit the description of what he's saying as a DP anyway. Because we are against violence, and uh, we we are not ones that are saying that we are saying that all what we are interested in ourselves is to bridge the divide between uh, those that have and those who don't have, and also we want all tribes in this country to feel at home when we take over government. But I think what Father Lupopa has to be very careful. The genocide we had in Rwanda was perpetrated by some people who were the clergy. And they are to appear before the International Court of Criminal Justice. The International Court of Criminal Justice. They appeared. Things like that, you even put the ruling party in a very bad position. Supposing PF was to win genuinely, who will agree? Because we are hearing statements like that. So even if PF was to win genuinely, they will say because he was supported, they are being supported by people like Father Lupopa, who are saying if it means rigging. Hello, rigging Mulandu. If I were the police, that is a matter I should take interest because it has gone in the public. What did Father Lupopa mean? That if it means rigging, how does he know the methodologies of rigging? Of rigging? Does he have an idea how you can rig an election? Because me as foreign minister, as a former foreign affairs minister, I have said before that Zambians should know that the process, if I told there is what they are calling rigging and rigging, the only people who can rig their elections is the people themselves if they don't go to vote. So the police should take interest because if it is Harry Kalaba who said a statement like that, I should have been picked. Father Lupopa is a priest, granted, but was talking to an audience of the Catholic faithful. I'm Catholic seated here. And that is a very big omission. That is a recipe for chaos. That is anarchy. That is anarchy. The Constitution of Zambia says we'll have elections every five years. And that the person with a huge uh, uh, mandate before it was first past the post, now we are saying it is 50 plus one. That is the person that should govern. So when he says, that's a very inflammatory statement. And it should not be taken lightly. If I was president, and the, the police have not taken action on this one. Because his statement, Yapsana Shan, with a statement that never Smomba, President Mumba made of the MMD, when he said they have brought equipment, which equipment they used to do this and that, he was summoned. Mm. And he went to force headquarters to explain himself. So maybe Father Lupupa also should tell us how Ngakuri Nwaka Riginga, and Ukuri Nwaka in favor of who? In favor of the PF. Please God. But PF never to feel it. Please, my father Lupopa. But PF never to feel For us to be following what PF wants. Who ruled us for 27 years? Who ruled us for 20 years? Question about PF, who have done 10 years this year, and that is enough for them. How can you sing a good to Kapela? So he's implying that. But PF should continue ruling in perpetuity. I am sorry that it will not going to happen. It will not work. But Francis Mombi, how will you balance the tribes in Zambia? I mean, first of all, Francis, when you look at Western Province itself, Western Province, out of the 72, 73 tribes that we have in this country, I think 37 tribes are coming from Western Province. You know that were your excellence. Yes, I do. About 37 tribes are coming from Western Province. Then you say we have got the... Uh, when you talk about the cabinet, Vainonga winner is part of the presidency. Because even when you are going for elections, according to our Zambian system, she's part of the presidency. Now, when you talk about a cabinet minister from Western Province, Nina Nishina, when you talk about a cabinet minister from Southern Province, what is the name? Because you have that guy, Ed Fahamukali. Mm. Ed Fahamukali is not a cabinet minister. That's why even on that chart, it doesn't appear. He attends cabinet. 
just because he, they're always withering that law which can allow the president to invite any other person to attend cabinet. Not because he qualifies. He's not a cabinet minister. You have Honorable Kapita, who was the vice president for UPND. He's now a uh, deputy minister, I think, Western Province. Yes, He's not a cabinet minister. It's coming from Zambezi. Or is it Mulilonga? Isn't a cabinet minister? So, we don't have a cabinet minister. So, it is supposed to be balancing. And if you can't balance at that level, that's why the president has got eight ministers that he should be appointing. Eight members of parliament that he should be appointing to cabinet. But he's not. The president uh, appointed Wanakachinda, who is a nominated member of parliament, and, and gave him a cabinet minister. But the president didn't give Mumbi Piri, the cabinet minister. Mumbi Piri has worked for that PF, right, left, and center. She has stomached insults. She has stomached this and that. But Mumbi Piri, they just gave up MP. There after Ramu Shah withdraw, Ramu Posa now secretariat at now walk along with FPP. Piri, ne, we don't want to walk A problem with it. So, the we in the DP will ensure that. We might not appoint a particular tribe, mm. but we'll ensure that from each province, we pick a particular person to represent that province. That is the way you bring out the image of a country. Mm. As, as, you, as we wind up the program and uh, you make your uh, closing remarks, there is an issue, of course, that the opposition always harps on and um, quite vigorously. That is the unequal application of the Public Order Act. And you're getting into election campaigns with a COVID, in a COVID environment. It's difficult. And uh, I don't know how you're going to uh, compel the authorities to have an even playing field in this environment. Look, it's, uh, it's difficult, uh, Your Excellency. It's very difficult because we've got the Public Order Act. We've got health guidelines in place. And so our space is shrinking every day. And the elections parliament is dissolving on the 12th of May. May. We are hoping that uh, immediately after parliament dissolves, we will have an opportunity to ensure that we, we begin our mobilization. But that also is not being granted. We have applied for, for, for permits several times and we've been denied. Even when we are given in San Fia, we are tear gassed. That's what the problem is. But we are not relenting. The closing of one door is the opening of another. Our people already now... They are doing whatever they can to ensure that we we are up to speed with uh, with the elections that are coming uh, on the 12th of August. So we are doing all we can. The limited space is there, but we are trying to do what we can do. Then they have the space. Then they have the space. They can do anything. Mm -hmm. The president is going everywhere. He's, and the vice president was saying, no, uh, he has to go and everywhere and spread the COVID. It's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, but for others, it's a big issue. So that's what the problem is. But uh, we are not relenting. They can do what they're doing. Because even now, Bachelor Isaac, right now, do you know what we're doing? I am speaking to more people than even going to bring people together. Mm -hmm. Right now, as I'm speaking, uh, Mansa is listening. Right now. Right now, as we're speaking, the whole of Lusaka, because even Quito FM mm. is carrying us live. So, so, there are so many ways of skinning a rat. And I can tell you, right now, mm. we are doing justice by people listening to us. Because they understand that we know that we are not And people should begin getting read to know that we are not going to be able to do this. We are With technology, we are not going New normal. Number ni new normal. Ni parebe kala banga alanda. Elu wasa apita fi ani posha ko muse wale posha le. Ni shina ni ni fi ofi ne because ababa antu. Elu wapi fi 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 wale wafaya. Because the way they are treating us is if this is the same way that Rupia Banda was treating them, PF would not even have managed to do what they have done today. Ba sata ba lu sefa ma lesi zamtoni zero six ba na mukwa tarari ba lu zamtoni zero eight ba mukwa tarari and no one was stopping him. Well, uh, but today, they don't want different ideas. People want, the civil servants want to hear what Kalaba will do for them. And we are telling them, we'll scrap off your loans when I become president. The civil servants, we are telling them, you teachers who are working in rural areas, you will make sure that we double your basic, if you are working in the rural area, your rural hardship allowance will be equivalent to your basic allowance. 
to your basic salary so that we attract people to begin working in the rural areas because Zambia is Sharila. Lusaka is not Zambia, please. Quite one of them one coco. Thank you very much, uh, President Kalava, for coming to the program. We can always count on you to share your views. Um, we thank you so, so much and for your candidness. But well. for those, actually, just two minutes, oh. Oh, a minute. Oh. For those that would want to talk to us, uh, please, you can call us on uh, 0977. 0977 74 74. Am I right with the uh, uh, number? More well, love number. Oh, nine seven seven <laughs> seven ten four seven ten four nine ten four. <laughs> yes, oh nine seven 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 four seven four nine four. Right. Or you can also call us on zero nine seven seven four one four two seven four. Oh nine seven seven four one four two seven four. Or you can call us on oh nine seven 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 nine one three three. Oh nine seven 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 nine one three three. And last but not the least, you can also call me on 0977-794129 or 977-794129. Oh, and also, they can also call me on this number, 0977-432211 or 977-432211. Your Excellency, thank you very much for the opportunity you have given me. I am grateful. God bless you. And may he bless the Republic of Zambia, even as we usher in the dp government come august because the youths have suffered enough all right uh, thank you very much uh, all those who who tuned in through quito 93.3 um 87.7 and kfm in mansa and mafkin radio in uh, mufulira thank you so much for tuning in in, in this edition of the hot seat please join us again next week at the same time i'm your host joe chilizia have a good day that was the hot seat. Don't forget to join next week at the same time. Exclusive to Hot 87.7.